Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, then smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's hook up MongoDB to our SvelteKit application. I have a bare bones app here, nothing going on inside and we're going to connect this together. The very first thing that you need to decide is uh, where you're gonna get your Mongo instance from. This method works whether using the cloud version or in my case, uh, I am using a Docker image. I prefer the Mongo Docker image uh, to the cloud because the cloud version is, as I've described in a previous video, uh, I'll link to that in the description of this one, but the cloud version of MongoDB is rather expensive these days and you don't get very much for free. So I'm going to be hosting this application when I'm done with it on uh, fly.io, which is well suited for running Docker containers. So that's what I'm doing. Again, if you wanted to do this with the cloud version of Mongo, it works there as well. After you've decided that I have ran my container, my container is up and running, I can do a Docker PS and it tells me, hey, that Mongo is running. Then we need to install our MongoDB package into our SvelteKit application. So we just need to do npm install MongoDB. Awesome. And then we can fire our application back up. Inside of my project now, there is two other things that we need to do. We need to create an environment variable. Now I've covered environment variables in SvelteKit in another video, but inside of svelte.config, we need to make one small change here and put an env option on our kit and just tell it where we are going to be having our environment variable just to make sure it can find it. And then we need to create our environment variable and that part's super straightforward. We just do a new file .env and we can call this secret URI. I can just make this equal to MongoDB. Uh, since this is running in a Docker container, this is going to work for me. But again, if you're running this in the cloud, then you could just make this your connection string with your username and password. After we have that done, then in order to get our data, we need to add a plus layout.server or a plus page.server. I'm going to go with a, a plus layout.server. So we'll create a new file, plus layout.server.ts. I am gonna be using TypeScript. There won't be a lot of TypeScript involved for those that are not familiar, so don't let that dissuade you from continuing. Now we need to import our Mongo client from MongoDB. We also need to import our URI, our connection string, just like that. And then we're going to export async function. We do need to have this an async function because we're gonna be awaiting some things inside of here. All right, and now the very first thing that we need to do inside of our load is we need to fire up our Mongo client. So const client equals new Mongo client and we're passing it the environment variable there, um, our connection string. Then let's initialize an object that we're going to use to track any problems. Just like that. So we'll just have an object that has, has error boolean and the actual error string. Then let's initialize a variable that we're going to store a list of URLs, but we're gonna be storing them as strings. So we'll start that as an empty array. And then let's try
to connect to the client. Uh, if that fails, then let's catch that error. We'll just make that an any for now. Uh, if there's an error, then whoops, then we will set has error to true. And we will set the error message to either the error message that's coming back if there is one. Otherwise our own, which just says error connecting to the database. Now, if both of those things uh, go off without a hitch, then we need to connect to the actual database. In this case, I have one already created called uh, all users. So I'll just type that in. And then from there, we need to connect to that. Do so like this, client.db, and then you pass in that name. And then we also want to connect to or select the collection. Now, uh, let me also point out quickly here that this command, client.db, if this database does not exist, this command will also create it first uh, and then select it. So this one and the next command actually do two, two different things depending. If the database already exists, it just selects that database. If the database doesn't exist, it creates it first and then selects it. Uh, likewise, this next command, uh, collection here, we're going to db.collection, whoops, collection, and pass in the name. You can do, uh, we should make this consistent. So collection name equal to users. Since it's a static string, we should be doing it like that. And then pass in the name. And now we have the collection. And this does the same thing as the previous command. If this collection already exists, it just selects it. If it doesn't already exist, it first creates it and then selects it. So super helpful functionality from the MongoDB package that we installed. Now what we're going to do is another try catch. So try uh, URL list equals await and we're going to write a function that just returns returns a URL URLs list and that's going to take the collection so we'll have to pass that the collection and we'll write that function in just a minute and then we can console.log here so that we can see what's happening and then let's catch our errors catch error so if there's any errors from this then we're also going to set that db error that has error to true and then we're going to set that error message and again this is going to be any message that's coming back otherwise our own and this is going to be an error retrieving the URL list and then we're going to return db error and URL list. Now we need to write this function. This is going to be pretty straightforward. So inside of source, let's create a new file and call this a backend utils or database utils, however you want to word it. And this is going to be a TypeScript file, and we'll need to import type collection from MongoDB, just so that we know what's going on. And then what we're going to do is export const return URL list, and this is going to be an async function that takes a collection. So we have our function return URLs list and that takes a collection. Now let's just go ahead and set this up as if we don't really care about performance. We just want our data and we want it right now. So let's just say const URL list equals await collection find 
and an empty find gets everything and then we just need to convert that to an array and then let's we can return URL list but let's print that out like that give that a save give our layout file that last update we need to import return URL list from our backend utils you're going to run into this problem if you are using MongoDB in your application particularly SvelteKit uh, what's happening here, and I did this on purpose, is that the error is data returned from load while rendering is not serializable. Cannot stringify arbitrary non-POJOs, and it's saying what we're trying to stringify. And what's happening here is that one of the things that comes back when you are selecting everything from your MongoDB is it's including the Mongo object ID, which is a, an ID specific that Mongo inserts. So you can't serialize that out of the box. One thing that you can do that's uh, easy is you can stringify it to and from. Here we have our URL list and included in that document is a, a special ID that cannot be serialized. Anything that goes through a load function that you're returning uh, here uh, needs to be serializable and so a quick easy fix is just inside of here we can take our items one at a time let's say const serialized urls is assigned url list dot map item what we're going to do is we're going to json.stringify the item. If that's unsuccessful, then what we need to do is pass in a second uh, function. What we can do here is just do an anonymous function that takes the key and value. And if the key is equal to underscore ID, which is the uh, Mongo ID that's what that's the property on your uh, objects on those documents it's underscore ID then what we're going to do is the good old-fashioned value dot to string so interesting that JSON dot stringify does not work like that and we're going to stringify that value otherwise we're just going to return the value so come through and stringify each of those documents coming back if you run into a problem, then take the key and values. If the key is that ID that's giving us that problem, then use the toString method, which is great. Easy peasy, no problem. Uh, and then one last thing, let's just reparse this back into JSON. JSON.parse. And just wrap the whole thing in the parse. And then instead of returning the URL list directly, we can return the serialized version instead. So if we give that a save, now you'll see that there are no errors and we are getting back those lists of URLs. Uh, and actually, it, this is actually the list of uh, users, but we're going to pull all the URLs out. Inside of the console running in the back end, you'll see here's that ID I was talking about. Now let's take a look at performance. This works, right? There's nothing wrong with this per se, but let's just do a simple check to see how much time it takes. And in order to compare this to something, then let's look at Mongo's ability to return smaller pieces of data. One of the things that you can do in Mongo is tell Mongo which fields you want to return or which fields you don't want to return. So let's take a look at that. That's called a projection. And what it looks like is this. Uh, we want to return the URL and we don't want to return the ID. That way we don't have to worry about your serializing them. Uh, we're just going to get the URLs themselves. When I was talking about performance earlier, uh, this is kind of what I was getting at. 
uh, it's going to be less time consuming, it's going to take less time to return less data. So if you are not needing that information, then don't get it. It doesn't make sense to pull all of the data from the database if you're not using all of it. And in this layout function, we're not using all of it. We only want the URLs for each user. And so one way to do that is with this projection. And you say, I want the URLs. So you give that a one and I don't want the IDs. So you give that a zero. So it's kind of like a Boolean one for yes, zero for no. Now let's compare the version, how long it takes to run this version with the projection versus the version that doesn't have a project. An easy way to do that is let's just define, after this, let's define a couple of variables to store some times. So let first time equal to date dot now. This is just going to return some milliseconds and it's how many milliseconds since the last epoch, which is sometime around 1970. That's not important. Uh, what's going to be important is counting the difference from one time to the next. Let's get a first time. And then after we've awaited that information here, then let's get a second time. Like that. And then we can compare the time. So let's say let time diff equal a second time minus first time. Okay. And then let's console.log that. Time to pull all data. And then we'll put the time right after that. All right. And then let's run the version with the projection where we're only returning the specific fields that we're actually going to make use of. So let's go ahead and do first time equal to date dot now again. And then let's do const uh, URL only. And we're still going to await collection dot find. And then we're going to chain on this dot project and you pass in the projection like that. And then to array just the same as before. And then let's do a second time equal to date dot now again. And we also want to get our time difference again. So it is time diff equal to second time minus first time. And then let's console.log time to pull only needed data. And then we'll run our time diff. All right, let's give that a save. And in order to make this easier to see, go back into our layout server and let's not console.log that here. And then let's also remove the console.log of the, uh, the whole list that's coming back. All right, with those things out of the way, uh, you can see there that the time to pull the data, if you're grabbing all of it, is 11 milliseconds. The time to pull only the needed data it only took two milliseconds. And then this one, the time to pull all data took 24 milliseconds and the time to pull only the needed data, 13. In one instance, uh, four times as fast and in another instance, twice as fast to only pull the data that you actually need. That's something to keep in mind when you're writing your application. And this is an easy way for you to implement in your own application a test to see how long it's taking. If there's a difference, then absolutely switch to using a projection and only pull the data that you absolutely are going to make use of. Uh, I hope that you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe, comment below with your thoughts, and as always, have a great day.